Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Matt Garvey and we're going to be talking about making comics today. In today's video, we're going to be discussing ideas, how I develop my ideas and how you can develop your ideas so we can get your comics started. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. As I said before, today we are going to be discussing comic book ideas. Why are we going to be discussing this? Well, every comic con I do, one of the questions I get asked most when people come to my table is, where do I come up with my ideas? Why do they ask me that? Well, pretty simply, I have one or two different comics. Boom, back in the room. And there you go, as you can see, I'm getting quite fancy with my editing techniques. Um, but in all seriousness, the reason why people ask me where I get my ideas from is because when they look at my table, they do see that I have quite a, right, a, wide, right, a wide range of comics on my table. I have everything from you know, inappropriate toilet humor to steampunk murder mystery to sci-fi to horror to all ages comics, purely because I want to try and appeal to as many different people at Comic-Con as I possibly can. But which begs the question, how can one person come up with all these different ideas? You could say that I'm influenced by the world around me and the life that I'm leading. And it, it's bizarre how ideas come to me. One great example is, is my superhero comic that I do with Robert Armour, which is The Devil in Disguise. There we go. And how this came about, I, I literally was sitting on the tube and I was listening to Elvis and I saw a pregnant woman asleep and the song... The Devil in Disguise came on, and when I heard that and saw this woman, I thought, how would the devil come back if he wanted to come back to Earth? And that's it, and that, that, that's where the idea came from. And from that seed, I developed the idea of you know the devil escaping hell and becoming a superhero because he wants to convince God that he's a good guy and deserves a second chance. Another great example of this is a couple of years ago, my friend James challenged me to write a Western, purely because um, it was the only genre that I didn't have on my table. And because I hate him and I wanted to prove him wrong, I accepted the challenge. But then I had to come up with a Western idea and I don't know a lot about Westerns. I've seen a couple of films, that's about it. And for about six months in the back of my head, I was thinking, I need to write a Western, I need to write a Western, I need to write a Western. And I had nothing. And then say about six months ago, I was having a shower. Sorry for that mental image. Going through my wash routine and literally the word voodoo popped into my head. And I thought voodoo, and I thought cowboy, boom, slammed them together, and now I have a comic called Voodoo Cowboy. So that's just how quick and easy it can be to come up with an idea for a comic. But if you don't have your idea for your comic just yet, please don't panic. You will have one. Just, just open your eyes, look at the world around you, and try and be inspired to come up with your own story. You know, take a piece of paper and just start writing genres down, and just write random words next to them, and see if you can. You know, just spark your imagination into coming up with something strange and out there. You know? Okay, so some of you may be watching some thinking, but Matt, all the comic ideas I have are based on Marvel and DC characters. So what do I do? I mean, first off, you've got ideas. That's great. That's half the battle. The problem is you can't write characters that you don't own. But what you can do is you can take your ideas and the archetypes that already exist in your favorite heroes. You can put them together and you can create a creator own book that now belongs to you. I mean, let's be honest, the comic companies all have characters that are very, very similar. I mean, let's do the list. So we've got Mr. Fantastic and Plastic Man, Ant-Man and the Atom. Seriously, look at Paul Rudd. That dude's in his 50s now. You know that somewhere there's a creepy old mansion with a Dorian Gray style portrait locked away in the loft. Quicksilver and the Flash. DC's Dark Side and Josh Brolin and Bruce Willis's Love Child. Not Jason Bourne and the abs from Arrow. Swamp Thing and Man Thing. Deadpool and Flash Thompson from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. Extra geek points if you get that one. And let's not forget, Frasier from Cheers and Frasier from Frasier. Okay, so I just want to clarify what I'm saying to you right now. I am not saying go out there and rip other people's characters off, okay? Because that's not cool. So don't go and write a comic called Fruit Batman or something silly like that. What I am saying to you is, is don't limit your ideas to the intellectual properties that belong to other publishers, okay? Because you can take your idea and you can adapt it and you can do something original with it and you can make a creator own comic that belongs to you. Now, a personal example of this is a comic that I'll be putting out in a couple of months called The Cage, which originally started as an idea that I had for a Punisher comic. In the idea that I had, it was about Frank Castle getting sent to a maximum security prison that was just for supervillains. But the longer I sat on the idea, the more I thought, I may never get to work for Marvel. 
So the chances of me getting to write it are slim to none. So I like the idea so much, I decided to go back, I rewrote the script, changed all the characters, changed the idea somewhat, and now I've got a creator own comic that I'm going to be putting out soon with my collaborator Dean Cotts. So hopefully this shows you, you can take an idea that you may have had for a pre-existing character, you can go away, you can change the story, you can tweak the script, and you can make a creator own book with characters in the universe that actually belong to you. That way you don't have to wait around for Marvel and DC to find you or run the risk of someone else having the same idea as you and making that comic before you get a chance. So don't sit on your ideas, develop them now, go out there and make your own comics. And that's the video done. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, guys. Hopefully you found it interesting and useful. We will get to the writing of your comics very, very soon, I promise. I just wanted to show you my process of how I develop ideas and where they come from, so it maybe help you guys further down the line. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and a subscribe. And if you can share this video with your friends, I would really appreciate that. And remember, if I can make comics, anyone can. Okay, so before I go, I just want to be serious for one moment. I just want to say a very special thank you to my lovely wife, Mrs. Garvey, because she's been so lovely and supportive in this whole process, and she's the one that's been encouraging me to do it. So without her, this channel wouldn't exist. So Mrs. Garvey, thank you. I love you. And on the plus side, if you guys hate it, you can blame her. So everyone's a winner.